Hey guys, what's up? Per usual, as the bougie as fuck YouTuber that I am. Sarcasm. I not only don't have makeup on, my hair is <laughs> so <laughs> ugly <laughs> because I just showered and I have naturally straight hair, so I just let that shit fly. I let my freak flag fly. But honestly, I don't even care. Like, you guys know that I don't care. Like, obviously, if I cared, I wouldn't post 95% of my videos in, like, big t-shirts and no makeup. But I think that's honestly part of the... Um, appeal of my channel the fact that I'm just like a girl sitting on her bedroom floor also a girl that's never like trying too hard by far one of the like most top comments that I get from you guys is that you guys appreciate how like real or authentic that I am which I think is such an amazing comment because everyone wants to be told that they're authentic like no one wants to be told that they're fake but what's even more awesome about that is that I literally don't try <laughs> maybe one day if i'm ever like youtube famous i will invest in lighting and backdrop and shit but for now this is what you're getting so embrace it also since i'm all about like self-love and positivity and like being confident in your own skin if i can be confident enough to have on no makeup and have fucking wet dog hair to post myself speaking on the internet then i think all of you should have the confidence to be able to have wet hair or to not have makeup to go to class or to go run errands or whatever it is like you know makeup isn't something that you need i just think it's a social thing that over time women have been told like if you want to look professional if you want to look nice you need to wear makeup and that's not true especially in the workplace like I've been talking a lot about this with like my coworkers and stuff there's all this pressure that like women are supposed to do their hair and makeup for work because otherwise they look tired or they don't look professional but newsflash men don't do shit they shave their balls maybe shave their face I mean some of them don't even shave their balls so like <laughs> what shower on a good day and then just put on like a suit and tie and they look professional for work come on now i've been so fucking exhausted because i've been doing camp all week with third through seventh graders and you guys i was so anxious about this because i'm all about female empowerment but this channel is demographically focused for 18 to 26 year old women and when it comes to like my career goals and stuff and empowering women i do want to work with older teens slash young adults to maybe even older adults as I get older so I was so apprehensive about working with third through seventh graders I'm also not a kid person I'm not a fan of kids I honestly don't know if I'm ever going to have a kid I just don't vibe with kids I don't know how to be like imaginative and fun with kids Ugh, like kids like are cringy to me but these have been the most well-behaved third through seventh graders ever they literally have lit up my week have impacted my life and I know that I've impacted so many of theirs and it literally makes makes me like kind of emotional because it just wasn't what I expected in a good way like it's been such a rewarding experience and for an unpaid internship and the amount of hours and the amount of sleepless nights that are going into running camps and running conferences and just working in the office behind the scenes like it's so fucking rewarding and it's just validating to me that this is exactly what I'm wanting to do and look you guys oh my god I literally almost cried there's this little girl named Mackenzie who loves me and I don't even really know why because she's not in my like color team like we're split up into teams and she's in a completely different color team than me but from just from like day two she's just like been coming up to me hugging me like always wanting to sit by me and I don't know I think kids are like really intuitive I honestly think that I put out a really positive energy like I think I'm obviously a positive person and I just think it's really interesting that so many kids that are so young have been so drawn to me especially when I'm not a kid person like I would assume like if anything I would like repel children but they've been really loving me and it's been so sweet and oh my god you guys look what Mackenzie gave me today I literally almost cried like oh I don't even like kids and literally literally you guys <gasps> are you kidding honestly the fact that she spelled my name correctly and she's like a small child keeping this forever but <laughs> into the tinder whatever fucking shit that this video is about from the title i got a snapchat from a girl last night asking me how i'm safe about who i meet from tinder because obviously you guys know that i've met like quite a handful of different men from tinder over the past few years i was just gonna respond to her but then i was like no this deserves a whole video like for as much as i've talked about tinder and meeting men from tinder and have had good tinder stories and tinder horror stories i have legitimately never talked 
talk to you guys about what goes into like the process of that. Like, how am I matching with who I'm matching with? How do I decide who's worth meeting with in person? Then when I decide I want to meet them, how do I decide that that's safe? I am such a lunatic. I have met two people from Tinder that have lived in different states and that is not safe. Each time that I've done that, my friends and my mother have been so concerned for me. They're like, this is how people get kidnapped. This is how women are sold into sex trafficking. Like, you should not be driving to another state to meet a random man <laughs> and just pray that like you're gonna come back alive but um, clearly I have come back alive. Obviously, if you guys are interested in Tinder or Bumble or any dating app or site, I want you guys to be safe. I'm just going to discuss like what a typical Tinder process for me looks like from matching to meeting. I have gotten a lot of comments from you guys being like, Tinder's for hookups, like you've had such bad experiences on Tinder, like why don't you use Bumble or like a different app that has like more credibility. And Bumble is great because the woman does have to send the first message, but honestly, like, I'm such a ballsy bitch, you guys. I, like, fuck the social standards of messaging and shit. Like, I will ask for guys' numbers. I will give guys my number. I will text first, like, all the time. Like, I don't, like, I don't get the, oh, he's the man. He should text me first. He has to wait this many days to text me. Or, like, if I reply too fast, like, I'm over eager. Or if I text first, then I'm, like, I'm coming off too strong. Like, I never think about that shit. Like, if I like you, I like you. I'm gonna send you a text. I'm gonna text you when I want to. I'll text first every time. I don't care. As long as you're replying to me and we're having a conversation each time then like why the fuck does it matter who starts the conversation like if I have something to say to you when I want to say it I'm gonna fucking say it and if you have a problem with that then clearly you're not the person for me so in general that's not an issue for me so the whole like bumble letting the girl message first thing like I don't give a fuck because I'll message first on anything texting app whatever what is good about bumble is that you can't just get random messages from men like saying nasty sexual things to you but at the end of the day if you send your first message on bumble and say hey the guy still can definitely reply to you with a nasty sexual disgusting message so I just honestly don't think Bumble is that that advantageous over Tinder or other apps or dating sites or whatever so yeah that's my response to that I don't care which app you use whichever app or site that you're using uh, it doesn't matter I'm sure this will apply to all of the above but typically what I do is I always <laughs> right swipe on the people that I like obviously I'm not like super hyped on tinder like obviously I've met people from tinder so that seems like I'm lying but I don't really message first on tinder I have to be like so incredibly unbelievably next level attracted to a guy on tinder or have like just such an insanely good vibe about him just from looking at his face to message first which is rare so I like the guy to message first because honestly like as a fucking man if you're interested in in me and want to meet me or have sex with me or whatever it is that your prerogative is if you can't even fucking say hey what's up to me to like get a conversation going I'm not interested like I really like dominant men <laughs> that sounds so sexual but I'm like a very confident assertive woman so if a guy is not more so confident and assertive than me then it's like a turn off so if you can't even fucking message me first when you're clearly attracted to me because we matched nah buddy it ain't gonna be a thing so I honestly like the guy to message first. Once a guy starts messaging me, I will then analyze the fuck out of his profile to decide if he's someone to even want to talk to. Because just because I match with you doesn't necessarily mean that I want to have a conversation with you. I could have been drunk when I matched with you. Like, there are so many factors that go into me matching with someone that just because we match doesn't mean I'm going to respond, doesn't mean we're going to have a conversation. So I'm a very intuitive person. I know that not everyone is. So if you're not at all, <laughs> I mean it's gonna be a little more difficult for you but I'm just such like a go off my vibes type of person and I can usually tell pretty well just from like photos and like a few messages back and forth like how I'm feeling like am I instantly not about this am I just gonna stop replying am I about it do I want to give you my number so that we can like actually communicate like through our phones I definitely just go off of like how I'm feeling like how attracted I am to the guy how's the conversation is he being funny is he being nice is he being disgusting like how is he speaking to me is he speaking to me in a way that turns me on or is he speaking to me in a way that turns me off so then once I decide okay I have good vibes about this guy I'm really attracted to this guy whatever I want to give this guy my number whatever I will typically ask for their snapchat before I will 
exchange numbers because exchanging numbers is kind of a big deal that person now has the phone number to contact you and your cell phone anytime that they want to which is kind of scary I usually ask for snapchat and then I snapchat with that person back and forth a few times and what's great about this is that obviously everyone men and women are posting their best fucking pictures on tinder I want you to snapchat me I want to see you on the spot taking a fucking selfie and granted there's filters and you can take the time to really angle yourself in a way that looks good but I always make sure that I snapchat the guy at least a few times without makeup like just chilling like on the couch at night just so they can see like this is what I really look like if you're not digging that then at least you know now like this is my real face sorry <laughs> but likewise because there have been guys that I've started snapchatting from tinder who have looked literally nothing like their pictures at all that I've been like low-key convinced that they're catfish like not even who their pictures of snapchatting is good to like kind of see what they actually look like and then if snapchatting is going well because you can also like text on snapchat and like the vibes are still good because usually guys do not pass this point like if you even get to the point where I'm willing to snapchat text you and snapchat pictures and stuff you're doing fucking good buddy but for me to like get past that point is huge so if the vibes are still good and the next thing that I do is I always 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 make the guy send me a snapchat video because one you can't exactly angle yourself in one specific way to make yourself look super good in a video if you're talking and moving you're 3d okay like I think it's pretty evident that the way I look in my perfectly posed makeup lighting on fleek Instagram photos is not how I look when I've just taken a shower I don't have makeup on and I'm in a big tank top sitting talking to 3d in a camera so I want to see you talking to me in 3d and then two I also want to hear your voice which I know sounds very weird but ever since I met the guy that lived in North Carolina the military guy that like had a girlfriend or something and I was like kind of the other woman that's a great story time check it out if you haven't his voice was like so goofy like kind of feminine like did not match his tattooed super in shape super yoked big dick perfect face body that it was like kind of a turn off and I driven nine hours to meet him so now I'm like nope I need to see you talking so I can see you in 3d and I need to hear your fucking voice because if you're gonna like have some voice of a gay guy or some weird super goofy voice like I don't like that like I just want you to talk like a normal man <laughs> I also don't like accents which is not the popular opinion like 95% of girls I feel like love accents like European accents Spanish accents like literally any kind of accent girls love like that shit I don't like that like not even like French or British or like the super sexy love languages that people like love those accents I don't like that at all I just want you to sound normal fucking American the way I sound sorry if that makes me a bitch sorry that I'm one of the like five percent of women that actually doesn't like your accent so then once I've seen a video and I've heard your voice and I'm like okay then that's when I like move into the texting and stuff I just text for as long as I feel like is fitting until I decide that I want to meet and I'm actually reading this book right now by Assis Ansari called Modern Romance and it's actually not that funny like it's supposed to be funny because it's by Assis Ansari but it's actually like a very like psychological very interesting book he teamed up with a sociologist from NYU and they did like all these like studies and interviews and like social experiments to figure out how dating and romance and everything has evolved from like our grandparents generation to now and like obviously with technology and dating apps and social media obviously it's so fucking different now I'm actually gonna make a whole video like talking about like the really interesting parts of this book once I'm done reading it I like already have like things tapped and shit just for like a little sneak peek for right now in this book and like through his social experiments and stuff it's like said that you should not send with a person from online more than six messages back and forth before meeting them because then you're getting to know the person too much through your phone which I agree with like if you're sitting there back and forth asking each other questions and like learning all that new information about each other that you technically would learn on a first date that's definitely a disadvantage like they're saying it should be six messages like hey I like you hey I like you too okay when do you want to meet okay meet at this time let's go get coffee at this place okay bam and then you do not communicate anymore until you meet in person and I get that but also for the sake of being safe and stuff I need to talk to someone for way more than six messages so sorry a season sorry um no I typically message for at least a week before I'm willing to meet someone in person but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm texting them all day every day like maybe we're snapchatting a little bit one day maybe we're texting a little bit one day but I definitely want to feel like I've gotten to know you 
you a little bit and like with the snapchat and the videos and the texting all combined thank you technology you can kind of feel like you know someone even when you actually don't so I definitely like to message for like about a week or so from there either I or the guy will be like hey like I'm definitely interested in meeting like what do you want to do whatever blah 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 and obviously there have been like six guys I think maybe that I've met up with from tinder and the way that I've been safe about that is a couple of those guys have been guys that I've like known of or heard of in real life because of like FSU like everyone knows everyone like so I've known like that guy's not a rapist that guy's not a murderer that guy's friends with all these people whatever so if it's someone that's like a mutual friend of other people that you know then like obviously that's probably going to be safe but in my case because I do like older guys I have met guys that have been like five to seven years older than me and obviously those people are not mutually selected with anyone that I know then from there at some point during this like week or two of conversing I've definitely like added them on Instagram and Facebook by this point because you can learn so fucking much by social media stalking hello obviously you can see all their pictures you can see like what they're like with their family like you can learn a lot about someone through photos like if every photo is a thousand fucking words like you can learn a lot so fucking lurk you can also google the person I've googled like literally every single person that I've met with from tinder just to see what pops up like you never know what's gonna pop up some criminal record could pop up so you should definitely google the person I even actually paid money once to see the background check on the guy who lived in North Carolina the one I went to go visit because he was so sketchy before I went to go meet him and like he gave me every reason to not go meet him but he was so hot I wanted to meet him so badly <laughs> totally would not do this now I did a background check on him to like just make sure before I drove nine hours to like maybe get murdered and like nothing came up after I've just done my like Facebook stalking and googling and whatever I really just have to go off my vibes like do I have good vibes about this person do I not because there have been people that I've met from tinder that I've had such good vibes about I've just been like I know this is gonna be a great person and they have been great people maybe it didn't work out but they have been great so I just really trust my gut instincts and everyone has a gut instinct so just fucking trust your gut if something feels really awesome nine times out of ten it probably is gonna be awesome if it feels unsafe or weird then yeah maybe don't go meet that person and then when I do meet them I always 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 tell multiple people where I'm going I've never once gone to meet someone from tinder without at least one person knowing like Brighton's going to go meet this person from tinder they're meeting at this place whatever even when I've gone to like the other states North Carolina and Georgia to meet those guys I had told my mom their first and last names I'd given them the address of like where I was going to meet them so like I have definitely like let people know so that if anything goes wrong for any reason and they don't hear from me then like someone important to me has that person's first and last name their phone number the address so like cops would be on that shit so definitely fucking tell someone who you're going to meet and where you're going there are also apps that you can download for safety that can kind of like alert the police of your location like through your phone like drop a pin that will alert the police if like you're in a dangerous situation I know there's one called safe track that you just open the app on your phone and you put your thumb down on the like button in the app once you release your thumb from the button it gives you like 10 seconds to enter a code to like say that you're okay but if you just release your thumb and you don't put in the code the police are instantly sent in your location and they come to you so if you're meeting with a guy from tinder and you're in his car or you're at his apartment or wherever if you're kind of just in an enclosed space where there's not other people that can save you if he's gonna do something sketchy you can kind of just pull out your phone and put your thumb down on that button and then if he starts to like sexually assault you or attack you or like your phone flies out of your hand because something bad is going down the police are gonna instantly be notified so that is called safe track t-r-e-k and then if you also just google safety apps for women there's like so many nowadays that are definitely an advantage that you should look into if you're going to meet someone from tinder or just in any situation that could be unsafe like also that safe track is really great for if you're in an uber and the uber driver starts being sketchy but at the end of the day when it comes down to who i decide to meet it's like all based off of vibes like from our texting from our snapchatting from the snapchat videos from all that stuff like all of that is accumulated into am i attracted enough am i interested enough do i feel good enough about this person to even want to meet them and then once we do decide to meet it is obviously obviously much safer to meet during the daytime and in a public place so for your first meeting if you are nervous if you're not someone that uses tinder often if you haven't met someone from tinder before whatever i think it would be smart to be like hey do you want to grab lunch do you want to grab coffee whatever out of starbucks at a local restaurant something that's in the daytime in public so even if you're uncomfortable you don't like the guy something bad starts to go down there's gonna be a whole lot of other people around and yeah like what's he gonna do uh nothing that's what i would definitely suggest for the first meeting obviously that is not what i've 
I've always done. Obviously, I've driven to other states and just stayed at a guy's house with him, and that is definitely way more sketchy. And honestly, I just think that I've been intelligent enough and have done enough communicating and enough Facebook and internet stalking to feel very confidently in my decision in going to meet certain people, especially when it comes to meeting people at their personal apartment or their house. But like I said, I always tell someone where I'm going. I've even had a friend or a roommate go to drop me off to the Tinder date when it's at an apartment or something so that they know exactly where it is because they've driven me there. And if they don't hear from me at all, they can literally drive back, like knock on the door, like they know literally exactly where I am and they like have seen the area. I also always talk to friends a lot about a guy if I'm really interested enough to meet him so that like they can get a sense for it too like my best friend Stephanie is extremely intuitive and if I just kind of like show her enough pictures and talk to her enough about a guy or like show her my conversation with the guy she can kind of validate or invalidate how I'm feeling and be like yes I think this is great thumbs up like remember that Brandon guy that I was so obsessed with literally like in love with him like maybe one day we'll get married who knows she was so on board for that like she really pushed me to keep hanging out with him in the beginning even when I like didn't really know if I wanted to always tell someone else but at the end of the day it's just up to your best judgment and what you feel is right if a guy is giving you sketchy signs or saying or doing something that seems kind of weird to you don't just be like oh well maybe that was kind of weird but I'm sure in person he'll be better or maybe that was kind of strange but maybe that was just a fluke weird thing maybe I misinterpreted it like no if any part of you even one percent of you is ding ding dinging like that's kind of weird or this guy seems kind of strange don't don't just overwrite that because you're so attracted to him or something that you want to meet because then you're potentially putting yourself in danger like listen to your gut because there have been guys that have been so hot that have gotten to the texting stage of the tindering world with me and then something has happened where I've been like absolutely not we are not meeting I literally was once talking to this guy from tinder we matched and he didn't have an age like in his tinder bio which is weird I don't even know how that's possible I don't know how he did that but we matched and we were talking for a little bit and we did ultimately get to the texting stage and then in texting I was like hey like how old are you because like you didn't have your age in your bio and I was kind of expecting him to say that he was like 27 or 28 which is like the max that I go and I've also dated like multiple guys that have been in that age category and he told me that he was fucking 34. I didn't like that. That was a red flag to me for many reasons. First of all, I don't want a 12 year age gap. I think 34 is too old for me. Second of all, I'm 22 and it says 22 on my Tinder so you're a fucking weirdo that's a 34 year old on Tinder matching with someone who's 22. Like obviously I'm not gonna be your future wife. Obviously I'm not gonna be your future baby mama. So obviously you're just trying to fuck the like hot blonde FSU 22 year old girl on Tinder. That's weird. So as nice as he was as intelligent as our conversation was as attracted to him as I was even just a little thing like that was like ding ding fucking ding no no and then he kept texting me over and over again because he wanted to meet really really badly and I literally was super honest because I don't ghost even though I could have ghosted him like I didn't even like know him I totally could have just never replied but I wanted to be a good person and I was just like hey like honestly I don't think this is gonna work the age gap is way too big for me like you seem really awesome but we are in different parts of our lives like this doesn't even and make sense to even meet like I'm sorry and then he like blocked my number and removed me from tinder and like unfollowed me on instagram and all this shit like whatever I don't care if I'm not feeling it I'm not feeling it so yeah that's how I tinder that is how my tinder process works really trust your gut always tell a friend or family member where you're going give first and last names give a phone number give an address always be smart you can download apps that will keep you safe please meet in daytime in public at first initially if possible it is definitely kind of sketchy if a guy is very persistent to only want to meet at his apartment or only want to meet at night that's kind of weird even if he's not dangerous he's probably literally just trying to fuck and if you're just trying to fuck then like you do you girlfriend that's fucking awesome but if you're not maybe know that you might be getting yourself into a very awkward position of him really trying to fuck you and you being like oh, no i hope that it was helpful and i love you guys and i hope you have a great day bye